When it comes to luxury SUVs approaching six-figure territory, you've got plenty of selection and the competition is fierce. No small part of that battle is being waged in the increasingly dramatic interiors fitted to the market's big dollar models, all with the intention of catching the curious shopper's gaze. In this video, we're taking a look at two of my favorites. So for your consideration, there's the Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve with my tester priced around $84,000, as well as a $92,000 as tested Land Rover Discovery HSE in the P360 R Dynamic trim. Of the pair, I found the Top Dog Grand Cherokee feels better at speed and more engaging to its driver, while the Discovery offered the more refined tech and interfaces of the pair, as well as the quieter and more comfortable ride over rougher surfaces where the Grand Cherokee could occasionally get noisier and more harsh at times. So let's analyze these interiors side by side to see which of these machines best fits your needs and tastes. On first impressions, the Jeep takes it by a considerable margin. The Summit Reserve interior treatment is rich and glossy, dazzling and curvaceous, not to mention glistening with texture and detail around and in front of the driver. From first glance, elements fight for your attention, and there's more than enough detail to keep the eyes engaged as you survey your surroundings. This is some potent first glance wow factor that'll impress passengers for years to come. My tester's two-tone interior blended quilted leather seats with a light-colored lower dash that visually opens up the cabin, while the use of natural wood and aluminum trim in the upper dashboard line work looks warm and inviting. Still, some eyes may find the climate control system to look simultaneously busy and dated, and the Discovery's system is easier to monitor and use thanks to multi-function dials that provide more straightforward access to numerous functions. Elsewhere, the brightly colored lower dash area made my tester's interior panel gaps more apparent. Ditto some of the recycled and more dated-looking control surfaces to the lower left of the steering wheel. The Jeep's interior is the more visually engaging of the pair, while the Discovery's first impression is starkly more clean, sordid, and minimal in comparison. The use of color, patterns, and textures is minimized. Much of the cabin is a smooth matte finish gray or black, with aluminum slashes and stitching visually breaking the scenery into distinct, organized sections. It's a calmer and more focused atmosphere, not as glitzy as the Summit Reserve, but much tidier. Case in point, the Jeep's drive mode selector is decorated with a studded chrome switch set against piano black, turning it into a styling element of its own. The Discovery's drive mode selector dial can be clicked flush into the center console when not in use, concealing it and contributing to a cleaner look. I also noted a more convincing quality feel to more of its buttons, switches, and finishings. So I figure the Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve is the better SUV for wowing your passengers, and that the Discovery is the better machine for focusing on your surroundings and the scenery, since its interior is less distracting. So we've got a nice, big, easy-to-read screen. The climate control console down here is very simple and easy to work, and taken as a whole, that helps add to what I think is a simple, elegant, and tidy look to this cabin. And extra points for storage inside of this, where we've got room to put things like our cell phone, maybe a camera lens cap, and so on. Uh, keep those out of sight and organized. Boarding and exiting the Grand Cherokee requires little more than a lateral bum slide. Just shift sideways and you're into your seat. The Discovery is three and a half inches taller overall, requiring more of a climb or hop to board. A more commanding and truck-like driving position and forward view are the reward, though boarding and exiting may be more difficult for some two- and four-legged passengers. Visually, the Land Rover seems the headroom leader of the pair, though it's the Grand Cherokee in the lead by up to half an inch in the second row. Front and rear seat legroom leads in the Summit Reserve as well, with a 2.2-inch advantage up front and nearly an inch advantage in the rear. Note that my Jeep was a two-row model, while the Discovery was a three-row. Definitely not too graceful uh, for an adult of my size to actually get in and out of these rear seats, but once you're in here, headroom not too bad. Definitely don't have the width of my hand uh, like I do in the front two rows. The view out actually isn't terrible either. A little look at the knee room here with the forward seat just up enough to give me uh, some comfort here. You can see that opening at the bottom here just a little bit wider than my boot. And so you do have to be careful getting in and out. The Discovery's shorter wheelbase but longer overall body see it measure in at 1.6 inches longer than the Grand Cherokee, so no surprise it's got the bigger overall cargo volume of the pair as well. An extended wheelbase three-row version of the Grand Cherokee is available if you like. After some extensive miles in both machines, I came away the most impressed with the technology, interfaces, and especially the displays in the Land Rover. Its 11.4-inch central screen is the larger of the pair, with the Grand Cherokees measuring in at 10.1. 
I appreciated the clean, consistent, and cohesive experience from the Discovery's infotainment system itself using a low-distraction white background and simple dark icons to generate a simple, clutter-free display experience that matches the rest of the cabin design. I found the display graphics in the Grand Cherokee's instrument cluster to be less impressive and some of its infotainment display readouts to be cluttered or difficult to read in certain situations, primarily on account of curiously small text used in some of the on-screen buttons. Parking camera system, of course, too. Uh, flip this into reverse, and we've got here on the left a top-down view, and that lets us see the entire way around the vehicle on one screen. Again, some pretty good graphics here. And over on the right, uh, conventional backup camera, if you prefer that. And of course, you can adjust the viewing angle, uh, call up different functions here as well, depending on where and how you're trying to park. And again, we've got some uh, pretty fantastic looking graphics going on here. Uh, easy to see plenty of detail in your environment, even far away. So of the pair, I think test driving shoppers will ultimately prefer the cleaner, simpler look of the Land Rover's interface, as well as the way it seems to integrate more seamlessly into its surroundings. Regardless of the machine you select, consider keeping a mobile cleaning kit handy if you're a neat freak. The Grand Cherokee's glossy surfaces are dust and smudge magnets. Ditto the aluminum trim in a Land Rover. Yeah, I have to use this to make sure that all of the interior stuff in here is ready for its close-up because let me tell you, uh, as good as this gloss sort of piano black finish looks, it gets dusty if you so much as look at it the wrong way. Uh, just keep one of these handy in the car if you like to keep everything looking neat and tidy. In back, the Discovery packed the more useful cargo area of the pair. Motorized folding seats work at the touch of a button in the rear cargo hold. Split tailgates, we've got the upper tailgate here. Uh, we've got this panel here that sometimes opens with the tailgate, sometimes actually just requires you to push that button right there. Slides down out of the way. This will support 600 pounds. This could be sort of a uh, workstation surface, tailgate seating, and so on. If we come on over here, power port, hooks for your groceries or your gear. These are the controls to fold the rear seats up and down. Uh, we'll be showing you that in a bit. And these two buttons right here actually allow you to work the air suspension. So if we're loading in a dog, something heavy, or anything where we want the rear of the vehicle to be lowered, and if I want, I can press this again and lift it right up. Makes for some easier loading and unloading. Let me show you some footage of how that works with my dog. Depending on your desired mix of comfort, reflexes, and performance, these two machines are some of the best on the road today. The Discovery's quieter looking cabin and soft on its feet ride were favorites of mine, though the Grand Cherokee's steering and handling response were some of the best in a luxury SUV today. A final reminder for shoppers considering the Discovery or a top shelf Grand Cherokee, if you're test driving one, make sure that you're test driving both. These two interiors are designed to appeal to two different senses of style. The Grand Cherokee's busy and bright cabin is glimmering with detail and engaging the eyes at every look, while the more subdued and calming design and color palette in the Discovery may appeal more strongly to those after a tranquil place to relax and focus on the scenery. Picking a favorite interior here is tough. After 5,000 kilometers of testing, I found myself more impressed with the driving position, interfaces, and calming minimal atmosphere generated by the Land Rover a little more than I was with the rich detail and engagement colors and shapes of the Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve. So I'll call the Discovery's interior my favorite of this pair, though make no mistake, having to choose between these two models is a nice problem to have. My name's Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca, and we'll see you next time. If you found this video useful, we've got plenty more like it, so consider leaving a like down below if you learned something new. Head over to Driving.ca for the latest used car news and reviews, and subscribe to this channel so you never miss a new upload. I'm Justin Pritchard, and until next time, take care and drive safe.